Build business funding from scratch. In this video, we're gonna go through the step-by-step -step process that you need to follow to build up a brand new LLC and then go and get business funding. Now, like I said, this is gonna be just part one. We're gonna go through an entire series this year where you follow me, look over my shoulder as I set up my own LLC, as I go through all the steps and processes that you need to follow to set this up right and then go and get business funding. This is gonna be a great series. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I've been putting this together for a long time now and I'm excited to start. So let's dive into part one now. I want to now give you an entire series uh, which will be going on throughout the entire year, uh, this year and maybe even next year, where we break down start to finish the entire process of like, okay, I, you know, I'm raising my hand, I want to go out and I want to get business credit. How do I do that? Where do I start? Going all the way back to setting up the entity, um, picking out the business name, business classification, you know, all of those things. And then from there, all the way to business funding. So I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, this was built with you guys in mind, all of you, the viewers, the community, uh, we love you guys. And this is just another way of us, you know, giving back. You guys show us love, watch these videos, share them, um, help us grow. We gain more influence and then we, you know, give back with hopefully really, really valuable series like this. So uh, I'm very excited about this, if you couldn't tell. And so let's dive into it. Okay, so in this first video, we are going to essentially uh, break down what I'm gonna do, and then in subsequent videos, I'm gonna go and do it. And the only reason why I'm doing it like that is because like, there's a lot involved, and I wanna set a lot of uh, context just right from the get-go before we even dive into it. So this is like your framework, and this is the framework that we're gonna follow. Similar to how we broke down a framework to go and get 100K, how to fix your credit, all these things were like, they're built off of our experience. Our experience with my credit profile, my businesses, people in the community, and now you know hundreds if not thousands of credit profiles and people we've, we've touched and, and, and seen do similar, we're just, once again, syndicating information. Like it's such a beautiful thing, right? Here we are two years later, we're still doing the same thing we did in the very beginning. We are attempting to go out and syndicate information so that you get a more condensed version of the process. And hopefully it's gonna be more polished and refined for you when, it, uh, when you go to apply it. All right, let's talk about the entity itself. I'm not gonna get into which type of entity to form. We've actually got, I think, two or three videos on the channel already. But let's just say you're gonna do an LLC. For the sake of this example, we're gonna be talking about LLC terms. What I end up going and setting up and you guys follow along with, I'm telling you now, I'm gonna go and set up an, an LLC. Now the great thing is, is that I can classify that from a tax, a tax designation down the road as an S Corp if I wanted to, right? But I'm not setting up any corporations in this. We are going LLC route. Okay, so we've got some fees right out of the gates and we got some decisions to be made before we even get started. So let's lay those out for you right here, right now. First off, uh, I use a company called uh, Northwest Registered Agent. It's the cheapest I could find that still keeps quality service. It doesn't sacrifice quality for the price that they charge. So it's 39 bucks to set up an LLC. You will get charged, unless you go do this yourself, to set up the LLC itself. Then there's two additional charges. We've got a state filing fee, and then we've got a registered agent fee. If we wanna do business in other states, besides the one that we set up the LLC in, we will also have foreign filing fees. So let's go through these one at a time. The um, setup LLC fee, $39 with Northwest. I think that's extremely cheap considering like LegalZoom is $150 plus state filing fees. This is a lot cheaper than that. And plus we need to, you know, cut corners, or not cut corners, but save money where we can because like this isn't cheap to set all this up. You'll see. Uh, next we've got state filing fee. So the average state filing fee uh, is $132 as of 2023. You could get it as cheap as I think 50. California is free until June of 2023 to set it up, but California is $800 a year year. Uh, somewhere like uh, Arizona is $50 and you never have to renew it ever again. So there's a lot of different options there. You're definitely going to want to take it into consideration where you set up. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. Next, we've got the registered agent fee. So I don't know how expensive this can get. I just know what I've paid because I've now done this like two or three different times. It was somewhere between $100 to $150. With Northwest, they got a flat rate fee of $125 per year. I'll take it. Okay, so I'll just use them. Like I said, if you're going to do business in multiple states, you set up the LLC in one state and then you have to do what's called a foreign filing um, or a foreign LLC, which is just a yearly fee in any other state that you wanna do business in. Now, you wanna talk to your accountant about this if you've got confusion. You're not gonna get taxed in both states and there's, there's a lot you need to think through on this, but those fees can get uh, pretty high as well. That can be you know $500 plus for a foreign filing fee in you know, additional states. Now, if you wanted to do business in every single state on the ground, you know, this might get expensive. Understand this is not covering like e-commerce and Amazon FBA and things like that. Now, 
I don't really know where that stands because if you notice recently, Amazon started charging statewide tax. So I think we're moving towards that. But at this point in time, unless you're physically there with a location, that's my understanding that you're gonna get a state tax. Now, federal tax won't change anything, but you're only gonna get taxed in the state you did the transaction in. You're not gonna get taxed in both states if you're doing business in multiple states and have foreign filings, understand? So the average uh, foreign LLC or foreign filing fee is $186 uh, as of 2023. The only other thing you gotta think about is if you need to get any sort of uh, business licensing. So obviously if you're gonna go sell real estate or if you're gonna do something specialized, there's gonna be licensing, there's gonna be certifications that you need to get in order to even do that. That's the only other thing I'd say take into consideration. All that aside, what's up, Wella Monkeys? I hope you're enjoying that content. I wanted to take a quick minute and just explain a couple ways that you could get more access to us. So first things first is uh, if you've been watching us for a while and uh, you've been getting value from the content, just take a second, like, and subscribe, maybe comment below. Algorithmically, this stuff helps a lot, so thank you for that. And if you want access to exclusive members-only content, meaning videos and posts, then you're gonna click that little join button underneath, and I think it's five bucks a month, and that'll give you access to that. If you want beyond that and to join our private community, we have a private Discord community, and you can get the link underneath this video in the description. You'll get access to dozens of channels talking about personal credit, business credit, entrepreneurialism, side hustles, real estate, and everything in between, as well as get access to, I think, four different training courses. So that's it. Thank you so much for your support. And now back to the video. Now let's dive into it. I've got, uh, what do I got here? I got a list of 16 different items. Let's try and fly through this as quick as possible, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to try my hardest not to drill down super deep because we're going to have, like I said, subsequent videos for each, really each of the big moving parts. Number one, decide what state you want to incorporate in. Okay. Number two, double check the business name. We're going to show some B-roll right now on the screen. Uh, this is basically a list of every single secretary of state for you to check the business name itself. If the business name is is already taken in that state, you can't register it. So you're gonna wanna make a list of like five business names, maybe 10, just in case the first couple aren't available in the state that you wanna register in. Just go through that. The next thing I would suggest is, number three, is that we wanna make sure that no trademarks exist. Trademark is kind of a, a lot scarier thing than it needs to be, but in short, if somebody has a trademark on the name, on logos, you know, on the mark, uh, the word or, you know, some sort of logo or design, they can come after you at any point and with a cease and desist and basically tell you to stop doing business. So if we're gonna do anything online or if we think this, this business might blow up or we're trying to, you know, we're trying to run volume through it, you know, millions of dollars per year, I'd say anything over a hundred thousand per year, we're probably gonna wanna make sure extra sure that there's no trademarks that exist. So right now you'll see on the screen, this is probably your best place to go and check. It's Justia and uh, just search the word that you're looking to uh, use, you know, or search the mark itself and see what exists. There's different categorizations and classifications for the trademarks itself. So just understand if that you're going into real estate and you see that name and it says real estate, that means no. <laughs> if you see that name and it says, you know, uh, food or, you know, some other completely different niche or market over here and you, you want to do real estate, you're probably okay. Make sense? Outside of that, you're gonna wanna seek um, some sort of professional guidance because I'm not that guy, okay? Next, we have two things that need to happen simultaneously. You, know, you notice how we're like, we're not even at set up the LLC yet? The next two things that we need to do is we need to set up a business phone number and we need to set up a business address. So let's start with the address because I wanna um, wrap up this whole registered agent conversation. So a registered agent is basically just somebody, business address, an entity, a person, a location that is inside the state that acts as the agent for the business. This is where all the mail can go. This is what you can use to register uh, on all your business paperwork, on your bank accounts, on credit card applications. You can use this, it's fine. You can use this on your website. That's where all your mail is gonna go. That's also where anything legally you know, will go as well. And so having an actual registered agent who's used to this, who can handle these situations is always gonna be better. But understand, you can set yourself up as a registered agent. With the whole business address conversation, please do not use your personal address for anything. Don't think I'm just gonna put my personal address and I'm gonna change it later. The minute that you register or put that address and submit it on anything, on a government document, on a article of organization or incorporation, it's gonna be filed publicly and you'll never be able to come back from that. I know that some people are gonna to wanna to cheap out. I'm saying this from a security standpoint, you don't wanna be doing this. It's putting you at risk. It's uh, associating your address publicly with this business, with your name. None of it's a good idea, guys. Please, please, um, trust me when I say that. The 120 to $300 per year that you're, you think you're saving is not worth it. It is 100% not worth it. Registered agent, if you are not planning on setting up a Google My Business account, trying to drive traffic locally, drive ads, if you're not looking to do any of those things, a registered agent is fine. So $125 a year, we're done, dusted. I don't need a PO box, I don't need a UPS uh, store, 
store address. I don't need any of that. I can just stick with the registered agent and I'm good. Now, if I want beyond that, or if I want to register myself under Google My Business, which is GMB for short, I have to take a different approach. So I've got three different options for you here. One of them will not work for Google My Business, but this is just something else outside of registered agent that you could look at. And then the other two, if you do it right, they will work with Google My Business. All right, let's dive in. First one is uh, Anytime Mailbox. And the reason why I'm suggesting this specific one is because we have somebody in the community that used this as a business address and they were able to get in with a very conservative credit union. The fact that they were able to get approved at any credit union tells you all you need to know about this, this type of an address. So Anytime Mailboxes, I think would be just fine down the middle if you wanna do it that way. Again, if you set yourself up as a registered agent or if you've got a registered agent but you wanted a separate address, you could set up just a simple PO box like that and you're off to the races with any mail forwarding and then obviously using this on applications, business registrations, etc. Anytime mailbox, I think is, it starts at like $10 a month. So that is like bottom tier. With that and the registered agent, those are like the lowest possible prices you could probably get. You might be able to find something for like $5 a month, I doubt it. Uh, I don't even think PO boxes are that cheap anymore. Now let's talk middle ground. Middle ground would be Alliance Virtual Office. Again, this is coming directly from the community. We have somebody who went and used this as their address and got approved with BMW financing, which again, like, very conservative. Um, they're gonna be checking T's, crossing T's, dot and I's. They're gonna be double checking on your paperwork. So the fact that that address worked uh, speaks volumes. Also too, it tells you right on the website that hey, if you set this up right, it will work for Google My Business. And again, you could just Google search this and get into, you, we wanna dive into these rabbit holes of like the SEO guys, that's not me. But there are specific guys who will kind of tell you and walk you through how to use Alliance Virtual Office and then the other one that we'll talk about in just a second. So what you can expect here is about $200 setup fee. And I think it starts at $17 a month in a major metropolitan area, you're probably 50 to hundred dollars a month. They've got VoIP options for you, phone answering services, mail forwarding services. So again, you could put all of this in one if you wanted to, your phone and your mail forwarding. So that would just be getting all that rolled under one, uh, one umbrella. So that's like your kind of like your mid tier option. Right above that, uh, or maybe in that same group is Regis. I'm sure you've heard of Regis before. This is an international company. Um, so a little bit bigger, they've got a lot bigger infrastructure. They've got a membership component as well. But this is like $200 plus per month in most major cities, right? And then they've also got options for you know answering services, mail forwarding, et cetera, et cetera. And again, if you set that up right, you will be able to use it with Google My Business. Hopefully those four options will get you started there. And then you'll see what I do when we go through and set all this up as well. Okay, so next is business phone number. That just leaves that left. We've got a few different options here. What's great is that this whole market is kind of like the same. You log in, they're like the same back end, the same kind of dashboard they give you. They're all about the same price and the cost per minute is all about the same. Uh, there's just little differences between the three. So there's three that I've used. I've used Grasshopper, I've used Phone.com, and I've used uh, 800.com. Not overly impressed with either three. Uh, I've used like Phone.com for consistently for like five years. I really don't like it. How it shows up with the call forwarding on my cell phone, or you know, let's say I'm forwarding that, you could even forward that to a Skype number, which I've done in the past. It just, it's not that great. I don't know where the call is coming from all the time because it, the caller ID doesn't always work. That being said, they do have a full area that you can log into and like have answering service occurring. So if you had your own person to answer the phones or if you did this during the day, I think you would have a lot better success than uh, what I've had. But that's one option you've got is just to use one of these out of the box services where they're gonna give you an 800 number or a localized number. And then they're gonna give you a certain amount of incoming outgoing minutes per month. And they start at like $19 a month, go up to 30 or 40. The other option that you've got, which I like this option better, is to go and get a phone contract for the business because we're doing two things here. We're getting a trade line opened up and established and we're getting you know the phone number established. So uh, all I've ever used is T-Mobile. I've used it like three, four times now. So that's the, the one I've got the most experience with and or helped the most people with. But I assume that um, you know Verizon and AT&T have similar. Business lines now are like really cheap and they're just throwing out iPhone 14s like Skittles or iPads or really whatever you want. Each one of those would just uh, operate as its own line. So we could get our business phone number set up under our business and you know, I think it's somewhere between like 60 to 80 bucks, depending on, you're gonna have to pay a little bit of money up front based on your credit. Uh, they are gonna run your personal credit, but it's mostly, it's all set up and established under the business. So it's not gonna report to your personal credit, right? Even though I think they pull your personal credit to approve you. Then, yeah, each line is, you know, an additional fee until you pay off basically the, uh, the phone and then, or the, um, you know, the device. And then from there, the, the price gets cheaper because you're just paying for the line and the service, right? That, I like that option better. So, 
We could also, with that, set up an 800 number that forwards to that cell phone if we wanted to. So if we wanted to just keep one generic 800 number and keep that forever, regardless of what phone service we keep, because we might not keep that forever, then what we would wanna do is just get an 800 number that forwards to the business cell phone number. So every time that rings, we know that's business, right? I like that. I like clear cut division in that. Okay, so let's quickly recap here. We've got our uh, name picked out. We double check to make sure that it's still available. There's no trademarks going on. We've also got our you know registered agent or address set up and we've got our phone number set up. So what's left? What we need to do now is obviously file for the LLC. That brings us to number seven, which now we need to open up the LLC. Like I said, I use Northwest. They are just $39. There'll be a link in the description. Yes, that helps support the channel. So if you wanna use them, thank you. If not, you can use whoever you like, right? Which I use either Northwest or I'm set up with uh, Anderson Advisors and they set up uh, for us as well. So either one. Okay, number eight, uh, submit your articles of uh, organization. Number nine, we need to file for our EIN. You'll see on the screen right now, we'll be bringing up the irs.gov website where you can um, file for your EIN number, okay? Next from there, we're starting to get into specific items now. We need to set up our Dun & Brad number after we get our EIN. So we need to get our Dun & Brad set up so that we can start to get a what's called a Paydex score. So again, on the screen, we will show the Dun & Brad. And then the other thing I wanna show right now, guys, is let's go ahead and cut in. If you have no clue what a Paydex score is, we have a full page breakdown on WalletMonkey.io, but let's just quickly show you um, that section of the page where it explains Paydex, which is a score between zero and 100. More on that, another video. But right here, I do wanna mention that uh, Dun & Brad also offers a uh, credit builder, which uh, is $149 per month. I don't know how valuable that is. That's pretty expensive. I think there's better solutions out there. They do offer you with this a feature that will allow you to manually submit your trade lines. So if you have trade lines that aren't showing up or vendor accounts that aren't showing up, you could manually submit that. That doesn't mean that it's guaranteed to show up. That's why I don't really like it. Okay. Anyways, 11, we need to set up business checking account now. This is pretty easy. All we need to do is uh, I suggest going into the branch itself for whatever bank that you want to set up and establish at and bring your articles of organization or articles of incorporation. Uh, it might be named something different in your state. And then you obviously want your EIN number, phone number, your address, all that information ready and available. And then if you've set up more than one owner or managing member, as it's called, you're going to want to have their information as well. But I'm assuming that you're setting this up for you and that you are the main managing member with 75% or more ownership. If that's true, you're just going to fill out the business address and information. You're gonna put in your personal information and then we're gonna go ahead and get set up for that, um, that checking account. We need that checking account so we can start to operate business expenses out of that checking account. So then from there, we wanna set up some sort of direct deposit or regular ACH into that business bank account so that first off, we can start to build up transactional history with the bank, but also too, so we can start to actually run our business. All right, congratulations. You made it through the bulk of the material. There we are 16 minutes in. The rest that I've got for you is just a little icing on the cake. These are trade lines that you might wanna get for things like credit monitoring, or uh, vendor accounts, things that you might need already. And then of course, fleet gas cards. Now you can leave right now. I just ask that please give this video a like, share it with a friend so that we can you know, continue to get more eyes on this. But if you want the, the rest, let's call this extra credit. We're about to dive into that now. I hope you enjoy it. And again, comment below if you got something to say. Okay, 12 through 16, these are immediately us diving into getting trade lines. And so you could walk away with somewhere between five to eight trade lines right out of the gates, right here, right now. Okay, so let's go through these one at a time. Understand that you could with a 685 credit score go in right now and start to get a credit with this brand new entity. There are going to probably be lower trade lines, but we could go to most major big banks, right? Bank of America, Amex, Chase, and we could go get credit with them right now. You're going to have to sign on the dotted line as a personal guarantor. And like I said, the, the um, trade lines are going to be smaller if you're at a 685. If you're over 700, you're going to probably get higher limits, right? But we could go do that right now. And nobody's saying that you can't. What I'm saying with this and what we're going to break down is just some really easy trade lines that hopefully represent things that you need, actually need for the business. So we're kind of killing two birds with one stone. Cool. So that's the rest of this video. If you want to just, you know, exit now, that's cool. Um, but yeah, let's dive into this. Pick two to five trade lines. We've got a whole video where we cover 13 tier one or uh, net 30 vendor accounts, right? This is stuff like Quill, you know, office supply companies. This is Creative CEO, where you can get shirts, mugs, and any kind of uh, things designed for the business itself. So if you want to quickly outfit like yourself, maybe a few other staff, you could go and get that done there. You know, if you want some branded um, stationary items, things like that, that's where you would go to get those things, right? So there's a lot of different options. You can even get some of them offer business plans. Uh, we got everything in there, right? We got Granger, Uline. So the 
few that I wrote down is creative CEO, because I figure you're gonna probably want a couple at least nice polo shirts, maybe a couple coffee cups or I don't know, stationary items. You're gonna want Uline because at some point we're gonna have to be uh, packaging boxes and shipping boxes. So they sell boxes, they sell um, the stuff to fill it, you know, like the um, little uh, peanuts inside or the packaging materials inside. They sell the, you know, the brown paper that you need, the tape, everything, you know, the packaging station itself. So I figured that, you know, most small businesses are gonna be doing some sort of shipping and receiving. So that's why Uline would probably make sense there. And the third one is some office supply solution, right? So there's a few here, but Quill is the one that everyone knows. And again, Quill out of the gates, they don't always give you net 30. Sometimes you gotta buy once and the second or third time they'll open you up for net 30. It's just gonna depend. That being said is, I assume you're gonna need some sort of uh, office supplies, so that fits there. So if you got all three, now we got three trade lines, and if we got T-Mobile, now we got four. Okay, so we're already at four trade lines right out of the gates, and it's just stuff we need that the business needs to actually operate, right? So let's take that a step further. We can now go get fleet gas cards. Fleet gas cards are one of the easiest things to get. We covered that on a channel in a dedicated video as well. I think it was back in 2021 though. Understand that the information hasn't changed that much, okay? On a brand new LLC in the community right now, we have people going and getting shell cards, golf, and uh, Kanoko or Kanako, however you wanna say it. I always say Kanako to mess with people, but I believe you call it uh, Kanoko. <laughs> so those three cards are extremely easy to go get right now with no trade lines reporting, and no business history, fairly easy to get. So I wouldn't say get all three, but one or two would work. Okay, so now we got another one or two trade lines right there. You see how this is starting to add up? Because we want to be with the business somewhere between five to seven, and then let that report for you know a statement or two, and then we go out and we start to see how well this business can stand on its own with getting trade lines without personal guarantor. 14, set up a Divi account. So a Divi account, uh, they used to have two different programs. They used to have, you would submit your uh, application and they would either approve you for the credit card. And if they couldn't approve you for that, they would put you into the credit builder program. Credit builder program, they are no longer doing. Again, this is typical growing pains of any new FinTech. Uh, so instead they just got the credit card account. Good news is it's no hard pull. So we could go and uh, apply to that and see if we can get approved. Uh, that is another trade line that will be reporting to the SBFE, Dun & Brad, et cetera, et cetera. And now let's wrap up 15 and 16. We've got Tilful or Nav. Now, let me explain the difference between the two. They are both uh, business credit score solutions. The difference is Tilful has two additional programs with it. Like you can go for free right now and start getting your um, business credit score. They're only offering one though. It's the IntelliScore. So this is the Experian IntelliScore. And then on top of that, you can actually uh, do their credit builder program, which uh, you can do somewhere between 20 to $50 a month. And that is just gonna get reported as a trade line. Think of it like self or a installment loan on the personal end, but it's on the business, right? And then the other program that they've got is a secured credit card. Minimum is $500. And again, that would also be reporting and they report to all the major bureaus as well. NAV on the other hand is way more involved. They offer you a lot more credit scores. Let me go through the list here. Uh, they offer you IntelliScore uh, plus version two, uh, Paydex, which is just Dun & Brad number, Equifax Business Delinquency Score, and the FICO SBSS, which is actually a pre-screen for, I believe, one or two of the SBA loan programs. So this is, a, this is a juicy one. So you can actually see your odds and likelihood of an SBA loan within this as well. And they are, I believe, $49.99 per month. If you get a quarterly, if you pay quarterly up front, you get 20% off the first quarter and then it's like regular price. But for $50 a month, well worth it because you also get personal Experian Vantage 3.0 and TransUnion Vantage, which I know aren't great, but inside of there, they've also got their matching engine to match you up with business loans, business credit products and things like that. And on the personal side, they do as well. So there's a lot involved there and it reports as a trade line. If we went through this list properly, we could end up, like I said, with somewhere between like five to eight trade lines reporting already, starting to establish some history and then that gives us way better odds when we go out, even if we wanted to just personal guarantor on these trade lines, it gives us way better odds to actually get higher trade line limits, right? So anyways, this is part one. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned, um, subscribe to this. We're gonna put this in its own playlist because we will be going through now each of these big steps together and you'll be looking over my shoulder as I set this up uh, for myself. So uh, comment below with specific things that maybe you wanna see or if you felt like I missed something. Yeah, if you just got something to say, you're excited, comment below, let us know what you think. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode.